Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, assembly in Inventor. So we're, we're trying to go kind of um, from basic 2D drawing, basic 3D modeling, and then basic assembly right off the bat here to, to get you started as soon as possible. So, so basically we're going to do a drop down menu here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and make a part drawing. Okay. And we're going to come at this a couple of different ways. So, um, I take that back. We're going to come at it the one way, a basic way, and do an easy assembly. Should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so this uh, part file is opening here. Okay, so we have our part file open. Uh, we're going to do a 2D sketch. Okay, first 2D sketch. All we're going to do is make a a peg. Okay, so this peg is going to be uh, one inch in diameter. And we're going to go ahead and finish sketch. So we have a circle. We're going to extrude um, the circle to be four inches. Okay, so there we have it. We have our peg. So we're going to go ahead and save this off. Okay, so we're going to save this peg off. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a, another part. So we're going to do a drop down menu. Whoops. Drop down. We're going to do another part. Okay, we're going to. Uh, do a 2D sketch again. Okay, this time we're going to make a rectangle. And I got out of sketch mode and I sent there. We're going to make a rectangle. We're going to go ahead and dimension it. So click, move the mouse, click. And we're going to make this four inches. And it disappeared. So we zoom all on the right here. We're going to make the width two inches. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a circle here in the middle of the, the um, oops, we're going to make a circle here. Okay, we're going to dimension it. It's going to be one inch. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and dimension it from the side. And our dimension is going to be half of the, we're going to take the, click on the dimension for the width here and divide it by half, so forward slash two. And then we're going to uh, go from the circle to the bottom, and that's going to be a half of the height, so D1 divided by two. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and, uh, and finish sketch and extrude this. We're just going to extrude the part without the hole. Okay, and we're going to just going to extrude that, um, say 0.5 inches. Okay, and click OK, and we're going to save this off as a toy top. And we're, next, we're going to go ahead and make a um, another um, file here. So we're going to make another part. And we're going to go ahead and make that start 2D sketch again. This time we're going to choose the XY plane just because we know that's the way it's going to fit in. Okay, and our, this time our top's going to be two inches. Okay, I'm zooming out there, and our height is going to be uh, four inches. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish sketch on that one because it's just going to be a block. So basically, I'm making the sides, top, and a peg to go through the middle here. So, and that's going to be 0.5 extruded. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and save save that as uh, toy sides. Okay, so we have our three IPTs, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead. We have them all open, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, we don't have to have them open, but we do. So we're going to go as new assembly. So we're going to drop down new file type, which is an assembly. It's very important as we're making these these uh, these parts that we have them all where we want them to be uh, on the file system. So basically, I suggest you have them all in the same file. 
our same folder. So we're going to hit the save as. We're going to go ahead and save this as toy. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and place our components. We're going to go place, and we're going to do, going to do toy top, open, and we're just going to click one time. Okay. Notice that we can click again and make another one, or we can right click and click OK to stop placing parts. We're going to go ahead and place again. So I click place button on the left here, toy sides, click open, and now we want two. So we're going to click once, twice, right click OK. And finally, the last thing we want is our peg, right? So we, we're going to go in, toy peg, click open, click once. We just want one peg. Okay. Now the trick with, with uh, assembly is that we're not going to place things. We're not going like, to drag them around and put them in place. We're going to do what's called constraining them. Okay, So we're going to click constraint, constrain, and there's a mate. So we're just going to concentrate just on the mate. So under type, it's just going to be mate. And we have mate mate, which is like gluing two surfaces together, right? two faces together. And we have mate flush, which just means making two faces be coplanar. Right? So they line up on, on the same side of the um, plane. All right, so let's take a look at how we do this. So if we're going to lock in this, this uh, kind of two rectangular shapes, we need three constraints. Okay, So you can still use this, uh, this view cube to turn things around. So the first thing we're going to do is do a mate mate. So we're going to click, see this uh, arrow that comes up here? You don't want to be on a line. You want to be on the face. So you see the little arrow, down arrow there. You click. So we select that face and we select the other face that we want to basically glue it together, right? So mate mate is kind of like a gluing it together. And then we're going to flush, OK? So now we click Apply to, to kind of finish that one constraint. And we just keep making constraints, all right? So the next one we're going to do is we're going to do a mate flush. So we switch to flush. We choose two faces, which are now going to line up together. So one face is here on the side of the, um, uh, the, side of the leg, right? and one face is on the side of the uh, uh, top. We're going to click Apply. Now I'm going to go ahead and shut this just to show you real quick. So now, if you notice, when I drag this around, this doesn't move, right? It only moves in one direction now, on one axis, because I haven't done the final constraint. So I'm going to click Constrain. It's Type Mate, and Solution is Mate Flush. So we're going to click one face, the other face, and then click Apply. Click Cancel Close just to show you, and you can see that it's now locked in. OK, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. Notice that you kind of have to, clicking, if you have a, a standard wheel mouse, if you push in the mouse, you can pan around like this. Uh, click and drag, left click and drag like this. And then we can use the, um, the view cube to turn things around as well. It's a lot of zooming in and kind of getting access to the sides as you constrain here. So next thing we're going to constrain is, is a mate mate again. So type mate, solution mate. And we're basically going to glue them together. That's what I think of when I think of mate. So I choose the face on the top of the leg, face on the bottom of the top, toy top, and I click Apply. Next thing I'm going to do is flush up the two sides. So type is mate this time. Solution is flush. I click the face. Remember, it's the arrow pointing out that I'm looking for. I'm not going on the line, right? I'm not going on an edge. OK, click Apply. And then my final third constraint is a flush. Click the side, click the other face, and click Apply. OK, so now we have this kind of locked in. The last thing we're going to do here is that we're going to go ahead and constrain the peg in. Okay? Now the peg is interesting because to put it in a circle, a circle, a, you know, a cylindrical object into a round hole, you would think we'd use something that would be round. In fact, we mate the center line. So we have a mate and a mate, and now we're going to look for this dotted line. See when I mouse over this a cylindrical object or a round hole? See how I get that dotted line in the middle? Not the green dot. Okay, That green dot is wrong. Okay, That's the center point of the circle. Okay, The center line is a dotted white line, like, like you see right there. Okay, So I click the mate mate on the center line on the axis. Now I'm going to mate it to the axis on the cylindrical object, which is the peg. Okay, I click Apply. Now, basically what that does is I just made it the center line. I can't move the peg out, right? It goes, it, it travels exactly as it should. OK. Uh, then what you can do, if you want to really lock it in, what we can do is we can, uh, we can actually flush. And you can have an offset with the flush. So let's take a look at that. So we can flush this flat surface. Notice I can't flush um, 
we wouldn't want to mate on a round surface. So we flush the flat surface on the top, the flat surface of the table, and then we can make an offset. An offset can be, uh, let's say, two inches. It could also be, oh, and I've clicked apply. So let's say, it's interesting, so let's say that I did the wrong, you know, I did the wrong offset, I just did it. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at where we can go back and edit these. So let's click on the peg. We're gonna expand the peg and notice that all the, all the constraints that we put on the peg are now listed under the peg, right? So we see this flush right here and notice that it has two inches in parentheses. I wanted to make that a negative two. So if I click on the flush, it just brings up that offset automatically and I can hit enter, okay? What I can also do is I can right click on that and just delete it, okay? And that just releases the, you know, it removes the constraint. And then I can go back in and reconstrain it. And of course I wanted negative two inches. And if I click apply, there it is. Okay, so you can actually go back in. A very good, just a, uh, a lot of times what happens when people start this, start doing assembly like this, is that they add tons and tons and tons of constraints, or they add conflicting constraints. They can't tell why. So a really good way to troubleshoot on this, if you start getting really far afield, you know, it just isn't working, you know, things are acting really oddly, a good thing to do is just to go in and start deleting all the constraints, you know, or delete the ones that you just added. You know, they add an order here. So if you delete the bottom one first, you're gonna delete the one you just did, so. Okay, uh, so that is an introduction to assembly. Uh, I hope it helps and good luck.